Welcome. This week we'll talk about computer vision and the convolution neural net. Computer vision extracts visual information or features from an image or video and understand the visual information. Think about us humans having our eyes and our eyes can basically process that information, right? You would think about cameras. When there's camera, you uh, hit the shutter and it basically grabs that information, right? Um, computer, computer vision is, think of it like um, trying to simulate um, the constant stream of information that the human eye processes, right? Think of it like a video. And it requires a lot of processing because in every frame of that um, video or f picture that's being processed uh, real time, you um, you have to get somehow snapshots and um, able to pinpoint uh, what um, certain elements in the frame pertains to what, right? Okay, so again, it's image processing, okay? Um, and there's a lot of features that can be um, grab upon, like edges, textures, corners, or blobs, right? You would use a lot of filtering and smoothing to uh, basically define define the features, and then now the the computer vision can make predictions. Okay, so as you can see, it processes an input image and produces output image depending on the needs. Okay. So the image understanding, right? It requires to identify, detect, classify, and recognize various spatial frequencies and features of, again, an object or element, right? As you can see here, right? Uh, this part, this is also trying to um, know that this moving object, right? It's, uh, let's say, a tennis ball, right? Um, so for example, there's two main tasks in computer vision, like deep learning, regression, and classification, right? Regression would ask where would the ball go, what would be the end result, right? Classification would maybe ask what type of ball this is, right? Um, sure, yep. And there's another one here actually, right? Where it should try to detect, the video is kind of wonky. Right, it could trace the path of the ball, right? To predict, so it already had a prediction that it would bounce, right? And you see the th three yellow dots, right? It's the predicted um, direction, okay? So computer vision test um, regression, right? The result, okay? Um, as you can see in the first uh, left hand side picture. Uh, it would basically uh, get the features of a cat's ears, a shape, and even the nose, right? Uh, this is done by, again, filtering them in different ways, right? For example, making it black and white, get the edges. And with that, um, we've been using this um, filter technology, right? Whenever um, we have used Snapchat or Facebook or other stuff like TikTok as well, right? You can make sure that the added filter, right? Let's say the eyewear matches correctly to the um, dimensions of the cat's face, okay? Okay. So types of com computer vision tasks, right? Um, let's say checking for a rider like bicycles, right? Okay. And this one is basically um, the up, upper the upper portion is a, a video and the lower portion is, I mean the upper portion is a raw video and the lower portion is basically um, identifying it and putting um, very contrasting colors so that um, us can identify it as well in the computer that um, blue would signify a car, right? A dark blue would be a truck. Uh, yeah, uh, a pink could be a pavement or a sidewalk, right? It's labeling and classifying those things. Okay, so 
Um, again, computer vision would simulate the human vision uh, via various algorithms such as the face detection to identify human face or cat detection in an image or video. This involves training. That's why it, it's part of the deep learning, which is a, a subset of machine learning, which machine learning is a subset of AI. Okay. Okay. So you have images. Now you have to train the networks with face images and you also have to do some tests, right? Put a new image there and see if it would identify, right? So, so first you would want to start with lower level features and extracting the higher level features, right? So for example, um, this cat images, right? And you test and they can identify the face, right? And what are the features that we can use, such as the cat's ears, right? The cat's eye, the shape, right? And after we got those small features, maybe uh, the whole face, maybe a section of the face, right? Okay. So computer vision, the hierarchical feed forward processing, right? So you got the raw image and it will keep pulling features and these um, layers, right, these hierarchies, right, um, would get more complex features, right? And they would keep integrating that as a visual information. And then you can make that prediction, right? So as you can see in the right-hand side, you would have the image, right? Um, and let's say in this section, it's um, trying to do some filtering, right? And this is a convolution layer and would do this pulling and then convolution again, pulling and then the output, okay? So convolution neural network, um, it's not only for computer vision, but it's one of the uh, usage, right? To extract visual label, text analysis or image recognition tasks, right? Um, and there's what they call the traditionally fully connected or densely connected network, right? But it's just an inefficient process because it uh, requires massive amount of pixel data represented in matrices, right? So CNN, however, uses fully connected network for classification, not the regression, right? But only uses at the end of convolution layers that learn the filters, right? So convolution layers first and then fully connected network okay and here's what it looked like right the input layer the training image right let's say and the convolution layer would have um, the pulling layer as well it can repeat many times right and then it will now get to become a fully connected layer and then we have the output layer hey and then here's how it looked like so let's say it was processing and part of its processing is in this section, right? So it grabs features and uh, pull the feature maps, right? And again, another convolution, let's say another feature and create another pulled feature map and then put them together as a fully connected network and then get the output. And now you would have the prediction that the input image is most likely what? A dog, a cat, deer, or lion. So here, right, receptive field is the image, input image that is defined, right? A kernel, right, these are the, um, the matrices that you would um, do some filtering. You would do adjustment on the image, right? We call them kernels. Uh, we can see this more later. Uh, and then you would perform the convolution operation, right, to get the features. Um, then you perform an activation function, which is the the ReLU, and the ReLU is the um, what's this again? Um, it's the rectified linear unit, right? It means that any number below zero is converted to zero, while any positive number is allowed to pass. Okay, so as you can see, it's a set of matrices, right? Um, with the kernel, right? And during the convolution operation, right, this image would basically be processed um, by, uh, 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 let's say, a size of um, 
three by three, right? Um, section by section or by strides, right? And then alter each of those pixels, right? And then pixel sections, and then it would become like this, a feature map would, let's say, would highlight the edges of the image, right? And that would um, help it become more sharp, smooth, right? And I would identify the feature, basically, right? So here's another example, right? Uh, a convolution operation, right? Where you have the this input and you would have different um, kernels, right? Uh, and this one, if you use this set of values, right? To um, alter this um, picture, you would get this um, black and white and edges, right? Uh, this um, ones and zeros, a kernel would create you a blurred image and the last one is it sharpens okay so here's a good um, gif that's um, showing us right so we have the kernel right what the kernel does is it moves if it's a three by three it would uh, move around uh, in the image in the size of a 3x3 three three, uh, grid as well manipulating that section 3x3 three three section um, until it finishes the whole image right so this is called the element wise multiplication right it alters the pixel and here's another example right and using a single filter okay so we have filters, kernels, and weights. Each neuron has weights which are multiplied with the input and the output of the neuron, and it's fed to the next layer after they get evaluation via the activation function. Again, the ReLU. Okay. Um, this is similar to what we had uh, last week as well, right, with the deep learning. Uh, next, they are first randomly initialized from negative 1 to 1, right? So we have negative 1, 0, and 1. So while the actual values are compared against the target value, essentially the loss scores, they're getting updated, aka learned, right? While considering gradient descent, again, via the activation function. So to update the weights, um, first, if we have no weights, we assign random values, right? And then each iteration would create weight values to update, right? The activation function would try to minimize the loss scores and the optimizer would update the weights okay um, it also defines how fast and quickly converge to the global minimal is done through optimization okay and here's the code that you can try to run right um, it will basically loop over the all the layers right and um, have the filters and the biases right the weights the input and the weights and you can print that out okay and you want to normalize them to visualize as an image right and you want to plot the first filters as well and then show it afterwards right so padding uh padding is an important part of the convolution operation because if you have a an input image that is not proportionate to the uh, kernel right you may end up missing a lot right for example like this three by three and then you cannot move around a lot so you would add extra padding and the padding are is zeros right this is to make sure that when the um, the kernel um, does slide over or does the stride in a section per section uh, it would cover the correct proportion right and again that's why it the purpose is to maintain the dimension between the input and output the same okay so here's a, a good question to ask um, you guys can read it out um, and the answer is right over here okay and stride is again it's moving the think of it's like a sliding window right 
um, and you can specify if you want to skip pixels as well right the depth is the color right the grayscale image is one you have the color image three with red green and blue okay and if you want to use the uh, convolution 2d network and we have different dimensions right but for the 2d part um, this is the syntax that we can use as a template right you would um, have the model then the uh, the add method and you would need to include um, the convolution 2d right which includes parameters such as the number of filters the kernel size right the relu activation and again you can test out different activation functions um, padding if you want to have padding or not um, strides um, and then you have the input shape so we were just defining the variables right to use um, and guidelines on how to use the parameters right so because now we know what these are and now we can uh, make changes the first one would be um, the number of filters as it gets closer to the output layer right um, this one is 3 by 3 use larger size if the image size is large like 5 by 5 right um, relu has been more, more constant but you can basically check out again different functions same um, okay you can increase the stride to make it faster right okay and again um, putting it together with the what we have before the two diagrams you have the input layer right uh, and then the convolution network layer and then the fully connected layer and the output layer okay so now we're going to be talking about the pull pulling layer is uh, the convolution layer that provides the output of each node which is a feature map or a response map each pixel in the feature map has a value of probability that belongs to the predicted class via the activation function okay this comes from the activation function uh, is it's then fed to the next layer a pooling process starts in the pooling layer right so wanting to note that it is an optional layer it can be omitted right it is a simple down sampling process where each feature gets reduced right if you were dealing with um, big data you have the map and reduce it's similar to this where the output is being reduced um, so that um, we can basically reuse right and use that to another convolution layer right so going back uh, to highlight the max the more interesting features right so you only want to highlight the interesting parts and the summary of more important features dedicated to class label and observation right it is typical that there are two or more convolutions layer to be completed prior to forwarding to the pooling layer note that the max is used during the pooling process right so you can follow along with these diagrams where um, pooling was done and there's down sampling as well right and if we go back to the kernel and the input right you have the slides and you would choose the max right which is in this pixel uh in this um first stride you would have the six as the max number and let's say in the next you have eight the next you have three and the next you have four okay summary of the layers and parameters right um models is sequential right and again you have the um, convolution 2d you will have the max pooling and you want to uh, add more layers by uh, repeating those steps right and you should get these types of output and these are the uh, computation for that right for the number number of parameters okay so the flatten layer so this is after the pulling layer we now have to flatten the layer uh, makes the feature map 3d into a 1d array uh, again because um, 3d is very spatial in nature right um, you we have to know the depth right with and the XYZ axis basically and for data points we have to have a flat data point right so that's why we 
convert that to a 1D array. Okay, so it's a simple transformation to feed the feature map into a fully densely connected layer. Okay, input, the convolution net, the pooling, and the flatting, and then the fully connected layer, and then output layer. Okay, the fully connected layer. Okay. Now we are ready to classify the input based on the feature map from the convolution neural network, right? And here we can now start um, putting things together, right? And generate that output. So fully con connected network process involves learning the weights of the feature maps that were computed based on the image convolution process. Remember we were filtering and maybe getting the edges or textures, right? The fully convoluted network have many weights to be learned via the activation loss function and optimization along with the forward backward propagation keep updating that um, training right uh, this network basically predicts based on what the each of the weight is responding among to the perceptrons right in the beginning prediction of a dog image could be 80 percent when it is actually a cat then the error is considered and then reiterate okay so, um, to basically add that fully connected, you would put the dot dense, right? And you want to include the activation as well. Um, trust entropy is widely used in CNN to calculate the network. Then again, after you're done, you have to do compilation, okay? And use an optimizer. And there are several, but RMS props should be fine. And define the parameters as we have mentioned the cross entropy and have a metrics okay so again let's look at the step by step of what the fully connected layer as a feature map is being fed into cat versus dog classification remember there are two parts there's the regression and classification we're doing the classification part okay once the flattened feature map is coming into the uh, fcl yellow nodes right uh, those yellow nodes weights are updated with a feature detector that predicts whether dog or cat back and forth okay it goes back and forth now we have a set of weights that responds to a cat here you see the weights uh, that also a set of weights that respond to a dog this tells us which attributes and features are most relevant to a certain class the neurons in the FCL detects a certain feature, eye or trail, tail, sorry. Uh, then it preserves the value and label to both the dog and the cat, right? Finally, both classes are then examined if it's correct or incorrect. By this time around, um, the it is now knowing that, okay, if there's like a more... Um, a circular eyes that is most likely a dog and if the eyes is more like a line or an oblong right uh, that is most likely a cat and also the tail right if you would see the tail that uh, just goes up straight or it has a different movement right compared to dogs okay while the networks are getting trained those relevant weights features are getting updated Ear features might be more accurately than eye features, for instance, right? If there is um, something that is a, a striking feature for a certain classification, right? It processes simultaneously between a dog and a cat after many images are getting trained. It would now know that, hey, after 10,000 images, it seems that this is a dog and this is a cat and not just dog, everything that's a dog, right? Okay. So to summarize, you start with an image, right? And then you apply different filters. Think about your Snapchat filters, right? Uh, to highlight some of the features and basically uh, keep doing that. And then add the pulling step and obtain the feature map followed by you flatting it into a 1D array uh, because we have to uh, deal with data points and then feed them to the FCL, then classify the input, right? This classification. Uh, this entire process, the network that carries the weight and features maps are trained to converge to the most optimal performance. Okay, we have now what we call the hyperparameters. These are uh, distinguished for 
from the model parameters like the weight, the feature map. They are related to network operations that would impact the overall performance. And examples would be the batch size, the epoch, iteration, types of optimizers, types of loss function, dropout, weight, initialization, etc. So these are the parameters that we did add in our code, right? Uh, it could uh, involve like a manual trial and error to achieve most ideal network. And you should just check out the following links for further reading. So again, even with the loss function, you do have to research which one could be the good one, the best one. And um, sometimes if there's no research, you just gotta try different ones, okay? So um, again, we get to access the MNIST database, right? And we can define a sample of 60K and epoch of 10, batch size of 64, with a validation split of 0.1, right? And we can have this calculation and it would create this graphical representation, right? For the accuracy and the loss results, right? And you would see how many times the weight has been updated. Okay, so distribution of train data set, oops. Right, it will be like that. Um, another thing before we wrap up, right, is um, we always were bound to this question about overfitting. And in overfitting, uh, the example part with that is, um, let's say you have a the image of every people or I mean image of all the cats and all the dogs in the world, right? And you now want to predict a new test image and that test image is actually part of the training data. So then you are overfitting your model by giving it all the sample size. It's not making predictions now. It's basically identifying that, hey, I have that in my memory. I know that same picture, okay? So that can happen during overfitting. So you don't want to have, uh, you want to have a large sample size, but not all of the available um, samples, right? Or so that it can still make a prediction. Okay, so these are the uh, references. Please read them up. I know there's a lot to cover. And if I missed something and did not explain thoroughly, again, 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 please ask. I'll definitely be there to respond and explain more detail on uh, some of the topics or concept that is still muddy right um, we'll get there eventually and we'll see you next week thank you